Andre, hi, uh, hello, distinguished colleagues. My name is Maxim Bashkatov. I would like to specifically talk about the hands-on application of uh, AI law. I would like to actually focus your attention uh, via the prism of regulation on how driverless transportation is regulated in Russia. And first, give me, let me give a nod towards Andre, because he was the one who brought me into this. I used to be kind of a, a lawyer who worked in more classic domains of law. And then I realized that um, AI regulation is no nonsense. As a matter of fact, the driverless vehicle regulation is the most evident and obvious domain where AI has been uh, essential. And this is also the way to actually earn money. That is uh, the way to monetize AI. And we need to fix this in, in Russia. First of all, we're talking about the regulation of testing of production samples of the cars that uh, are equipped with AI. And there is a specific order from Russian government that is very, very limiting because uh, uh, businesses have to get specific permission for almost every single production unit. There could not be um, a permission to test the set of uh, the set of production units and besides it is impossible to so far monetize um, driverless vehicles it is impossible to monetize on cargo transfer or passenger transfer and of course the convention of Vienna of 1968 which indirectly prohibits uh, remote piloting of vehicles and driverless vehicles per se, because according to uh, Convention of Vienna and Russia, by the way, is a member of the, con of the convention, there should always be a driver who can take the steering wheel in hand literally at any given time. So that creates certain unjustified limits for the creators of AI driverless systems. That makes um, uh, developers just waste the investment. The more vehicles we have on the road, uh, the more there, the higher there is a chance to train the model in the best possible way, hence making it secure. Of course, US and Singapore are leading in terms of uh, loose uh, a driverless vehicles regulation. Some companies, uh, some countries like the UK and Spain are trying to play around the Convention of Vienna and its statements, uh, meaning that uh, it's not the human driver per se, it can be sort of a mechanical being. Other countries like USA, Singapore and other Asian countries allow the fully fledged commercial use of driverless systems in a quite a loose way, free way. And even security uh, requirements that are evident in this domain are um, actually established um, more in a self-regulating way. So how it, is it possible to balance the system? There should be certain statements of uh, um, responsibility. So uh, there should be some sort of well-recorded systems of uh, responsibilities uh, that include the developer, the driver, the owner, the producer. So, what would be a perfect approach here? First of all, it would be better to reject the regulation that is present at the moment. All of the car manufacturers in Russia know about it. And of course, uh, test and trial without the driver should be allowed and broadened. The certification should not be specifically uh, required for every particular vehicle, but a set of vehicles should be allowed to, cer to be certified, actually. Another important point. 
In Europe, most of the countries coincide that there is no need to specifically regulate the responsibilities. Why? Because the owner of the source of risk should be in charge, should be responsible. This whole conversation about res responsibility regarding driverless cars, every stakeholder is searching for reasons outside of outside of legal field to change the status quo because the owner of the source of risk should be responsible as as it's seen in the Eurasian law but they're trying to transfer the risk onto the producer onto the manufacturer also onto the manufacturer of the actual system for driverless car in Germany, for example, they're saying that the owner of the source of risk is in charge, is responsible. And the pedestrian who got kid hit does not care whether the AI system malfunction, the hardware malfunction, or um, the person in the car was an idiot or because of the wheel deflated. In terms of the administration of law, the pedestrian who was hit by a car should not really investigate who is the one to blame, the developer of the software or the manufacturer of the wheel that mal malfunctions or the brakes that malfunctioned. That should not include the litigations or the appeals. It should be simplified. The owner of the source of risk is responsible. That's easy. Or they could be... Uh, or they could be some sort of joint uh, liability, collective guarantee shared responsibility between stakeholders and they will deal uh, and all of the subjects of responsibility uh, within the shared responsibility will be dealing with one another in terms of litigation but that should not be on the shoulders of the of those who were hit by a car i don't think that we can teach uh, models ethics that is just unscientific it's like uh, passing the bill that uh, all of the citizens must be ethic. No. Uh, there is no legal administration of ethics. It's just unscientific. And if we talk about subject of law in any legal administration, it's not the uh, intertwining psychological intents. In any legal administration system, the subject of law has to be free to express its will. So, putting it simply, is a robot is a subject of law? Is when it's doing something when it does not want to do it. If uh, the drone is bombarding something unwillingly, then it's the subject of law. Otherwise, it's just the expensive piece of hardware. We need to distinguish the will and the expression of will. Dear colleagues, thank you very much.